All right, so let's look at some questions to do with motion graphs. So to start with, we're going to describe what each of the graphs shows about the motion of a vehicle. So looking at graph A, we can see its distance is not changing with time. So that object is not moving or it's stationary. Object B, we've got the distance is increasing over time, so it is moving. And the gradient is constant, so it's moving at constant speed. Uh, C, we can see the speed doesn't change with time, so that's traveling at constant speed. And D, we can see speed is increasing over time. It's a straight line graph, so it's experiencing constant acceleration. Draw a sketch graph of distance against time for a bus that approaches a bus stop, waits at the stop for a while, and then sets off again. So, here are axes for distance versus time. So as it approaches the stop, it's going to be slowing down. So I reckon the gradient is going to be decreasing. At the stop, it's going to be stationary, so its distance isn't going to change. And then it's going to accelerate away from the stop, so its speed increases, so the gradient increases. OK, so the graph of speed against time is below represents the journey of a lorry along a main road. What is happening to the speed of the lorry during the first 200 seconds? Uh, well, first of all, what we can do is it's a straight line graph, so we can just calculate what the acceleration is by doing rate of change of velocity. So the change in velocity is 15. The time taken is 200. So we can see we've got an acceleration of 0 0.075 meters per second squared. So in terms of what's happening to the speed, the lorry is experiencing constant acceleration of 0.075 and which, as its speed increases. So what is happening to the speed of the lorry during the next 100 seconds? Well, it stays constant at 15 meters per second. Uh, or its acceleration is zero, if you like. And with these questions, I'm trying to be very specific about actually what the values are. Use the graph to calculate the distance traveled by the lorry in 300 seconds. So what I'm going to do is find the area under the graph. We've got a triangle and a square we need to add together. And so I've got the area of the triangle, I've got the area of the square, add them together, and we got 3,000 meters. Distance and displacement do not mean the same thing. Explain the difference. So. The magnitude of displacement is the distance, but displacement also has an indication of direction. So displacement is a vector, uh, distance is a uh, scalar. And we can do the same thing with speed and velocity. So the magnitude or size of the velocity is speed, but velocity also has a direction. So velocity is a vector, but speed is a scalar. So a displacement time graph uh, of a sprinter. Okay, so uh, what we've got is initially we've got it traveling at a constant speed and then it travels at a lower constant speed later on by shown by a shallower gradient. So use the graph to calculate the velocity during the first two seconds. So velocity is the gradient. So we're going to do change in displacement, uh, change in time. Uh, so that gives us our uh, velocity. The next thing it wants us to calculate is the new velocity afterwards. So again, we're going to do the same thing, change in displacement over change in time. That gives us our velocity. And then finally, figuring out how far it's traveled. Uh, the first, the most simple thing to do is look at the y-axis and see it's 40, but we can actually prove it using the uh, average velocity times time so during the first section, we know the average velocity because we calculated it earlier, it's 10. During the second section, we know the average velocity, 6.6. So we add those two together and we do indeed get 40, uh, but we can just read that off the graph. A car changes its velocity from 7 to 13 meters per second over a period of four seconds. Calculate its average acceleration. So average acceleration is just the change of velocity divided by the time taken we don't know if it's been constant but this is the average and so we can calculate that 
Similar type question next. Uh, we've got a change in velocity in and a time, so we can get average acceleration from that too. So the cyclist had an instrument on the bicycle that displayed his acceleration. If the display read minus 0.65, what would that tell you about the motion of the bicycle? So, negative acceleration indicates the bike is slowing down, uh, but I'm just going to flag this up. We are assuming the bike is traveling in the positive direction so that a negative acceleration means there's a braking force or a force trying to slow it down. OK, so we've got a velocity versus time graph and we can see it's a straight line. So we've got constant acceleration up to a speed of 10 meters per second by eight seconds. OK, from the graph, calculate the acceleration of the skateboarder. So acceleration is the gradient of the graph. So we're going to do change in velocity divided by change in time. And that's using the values from the graph is a fairly simple calculation. OK, so on the graph, draw lines to show the skateboarder slowing down from 10 to 6 in 2 seconds, constant speed of 6 for 2 seconds, and becoming stationary after 4 seconds. OK, so there's our 2 second deceleration, there's our constant speed, and there's our final deceleration. Calculate the deceleration of the skateboarder in the final 4 seconds. So. Uh, deceleration is minus 1 times the gradient, or just minus the gradient, because deceleration is acceleration times minus 1. Okay, So that deceleration is uh, change in velocity, so final, remember change is final minus initial, so 0 minus 6, time passed 4 minus 0, minus, minus, and we get 1.5 meters per second squared. Drag racing cars are designed to cover only short distances, but do so in a very short time. From a standing start, a drag racing car can travel 500 meters in a time of 8 seconds, reaching a velocity of 150 meters per second. Calculate the average velocity of the car. Well, average velocity is distance divided by time. So the, the displacement during that period of time uh, is 500, the time is 8 seconds, so we have the average velocity. What is the acceleration? Uh, so the average acceleration we can calculate using v minus u over t. Uh, we know the final velocity is 150, we know it started at 0 because it said a standing start, we know it takes 8 seconds, so we get our average acceleration, and that completes this set of solutions.